Original audio drama from the Questus Theatre. AFW by Jim O'Connor. No go in the control room, I'm afraid. The entrance camera's on the blink, so we don't know how he managed the steps. And in the waiting room, he didn't bother reaching for the shelf magazines. The toilet? Nothing useful there. Wasn't used. Is that coffee? Yes. Sorry, did you want one? Hmm. Any new directives from upstairs? Only to continue pursuing strict criteria guidelines to ensure we meet quotas. When one deciphers Mr Hardy's handwriting, he has provided a fairly comprehensive application. I'm sure you found some questionable responses. Let's have him in then. As is alone, we'll separate these chairs a little. Mr Hardy. Hello, Mr Hardy. Do come in. Have a seat. Ugh. Good morning. Oh, is that chair okay for you? The way I'm feeling, any chair is welcome. You don't exactly make this room easy to find. Third floor, top end of a long corridor. Sorry about that. If people require a wheelchair, they usually arrive with one. Is it still raining? No, it's eased. It's certainly not been the best of summers, has it? Have you been away at all? That's no longer practical for me. Perhaps we should start by introducing ourselves. I'm Veronica Smith, and my colleague is... Angela Weston. Can we assume, Mr Hardy, that you know exactly where you are and why you're here? Yes, it's safe to assume that. So why are you here? Come again? Odd as it may see, Mr Hardy, we get some claimants, thankfully accompanied, who have problems with that question. I see. Unless I'm mistaken, I'm in Benefit House, where I'm optimistic it'll be found I qualify for a life enhancement allocated pension. A leap. I hope so. Excellent. How did you get here? By bus. Did you require any assistance? Yes, some. In what way? The driver told me the right stop. How far did you walk before catching the bus? Oh, about 30 yards. 30 yards? <laughs> I still use imperial measures. I suppose I'm lucky with the stop. 30 yards is about my limit. And when the bus arrived, you reached for the bar, stepped inside with pass in hand, and if necessary, could have gone to the rear of the bus for a seat. If necessary? I wasn't going to get off, was I? Do you ever take a cab, Mr Hardy? I can't afford them. I... May I make an observation? I spent several days writing answers to your hundred odd questions on the application form, including those covering my transport problems. Why are you going over the same ground again? I can appreciate that from where you're sitting that might be irritating, but I assure you it is a necessary part of the assessment. Sometimes there's a contradiction between what applicants write and their verbal response to the same question. For instance, question 56A asks if you have any problem with steps. You've given a lengthy reply about the difficulties they present, but you seem to be able to board a bus OK. Thankfully, buses do not as yet have as many steps as the underground, buildings without lifts or two-storey houses. Try to understand, Mr Hardy. Our questions are essential to substantiate your written answers, to ensure we arrive at a full understanding of how your disability affects your day-to-day -day living. And in case you've forgotten anything or left anything out... I'll be here a long time then if you need to substantiate a hundred answers. I'm sure with your cooperation we can cover a selection of these quickly and efficiently. Hmm. 
Moving on, can you tell us the nature of your disability? Have you read my GPs, physios and neurosurgeons reports? Of course, but experience tells us there are a number of team GPs and consultants who are only too anxious to write anything that will get awkward patients off their hands. Not that we're suggesting that applies to present company, of course, but nevertheless we like to hear it from the horse's mouth. I see. Well, as I understand it, I've got posterior disc prolapse causing aggravating degree spinal stenosis, well, that's... plus serious effacement and impingement of the cauda equina, together with severe osteoarthritis. Does that sound like fabrication to you? Hmm. And how does that make you feel, Mr Hardy? As you would if you had the identical afflictions. Could you be more specific? I'm depressed and... Bloody... Frustrated. Stymied. Vexatious. Fractious. Had it up to here. Cut to the quick. Sick as a parrot. Angry as an amnesiac squirrel. All exacerbated by the fact that you're, you're not, not AFW. AFW. Not what? Available for work. You're UFW. UFW. Unfit for work. I most certainly am. Ah... Uh. Now, that could depend on the nature of the work, couldn't it? We have any number of TDAs... Tom, Dick and Harry's... ...saying they're unable to work at all, contrary to our findings. One day they can't handle a toothbrush, and the next they're doing three circuits in the gym and quaffing five pints in the local, whilst filling out a futile application for a widow's pension. Unbelievable. Oh, yes. The Daily Mail has verified such a group. Well, I'm definitely not a TDA. More an um, LEA. Which is? A liberal for me, Snackton. Time is pressing. So, moving on. We need to reach some understanding of your physical and cognitive abilities and limitations. Could I begin by asking you to move into the other chair? <laughs> Bother. <clears throat> Angela will retrieve it. I'll be needing that. Not to panic. It's safe in Angela's hands. I prefer it in mine. Do you experience panic attacks, Mr Hardy? Not yet, no. Not even when you're faced with a fresh challenge? I seem to have those every day. Supply an example. Retrieving my cane? I drop things frequently. How do you react when something goes wrong? I employ a... Yes, a... Bucket full of industrial language. Shall I supply an example? Hmm. In response to question 45, you say you have recurrent depressive episodes. Do you think you do anything to encourage those episodes? Who? wants to encourage depression. But in your answer to question 53, you write, in pursuing your lifelong interest in football, that you're a supporter of Bolton Wanderers, who, as I've discovered, were relegated last season and are now bottom of the league again. <laughs> that can hardly raise your spirits. Every team has its ups and downs. How do you spend your days? Half the morning seems to go getting up and dressing. How do you dress? Very slowly and alone. Do your trousers have a zip or a button fly? Since something got painfully caught on the zip, I prefer buttons. And once fully dressed? I go next door. To a neighbour? To the cafe for breakfast. And what about other meals? I often go next door. To the cafe? To a neighbour who does a lovely roast. Does she provide any other services? She's not a she, she's a he, and a very willing one. Over the meal, do you enjoy a good wine together? Occasionally. Who opens it? Often I do with a gadget while he's making the gravy. So, you can operate a corkscrew? I always select a screw top. Can you multitask? You mean sit on the toilet and read? Not quite. Can you make tea and toast simultaneously? Do you watch EastEnders? Can you follow a complex storyline? 
Do you know the order of a washing machine cycle? If you have £50 in one pocket and £100 in the other, what have you got? Answers, please, and no evasion. Um, yes, yes, no, yes, yes, uh, somebody else's trousers. Do avoid flippancy, Mr Hardy. However, your memory recall appears to be healthfully intact. It isn't. I forgot to feed the cat. You can manage tinned cat food. Nelson prefers biscuits. Hmm. We won't detain you too much longer. There's just a few physical details we want to check. So, Miss Weston is going to take you through a few exercises, OK? Stretch your right arm up as far as it can go for me and drop it. Do try to repeat, Mr Hardy, as best you can. Now your left arm, up and drop. Now both together, up and drop. We're interested in your coordination, Mr Hardy. At least make an attempt. If you could stand up for me, then bend in the knees and straighten up again. What? We need to observe how efficient your legs are. I'm not a performing seal. Oh, very well. Oh. Oh. oh! Sorry about that. Hope it was only tea. No worries, no damage done. So what's next? The hokey cokey? It would be to your advantage to cooperate, Mr Hardy. So far, you certainly don't meet the qualifying criteria for a leap. Don't I? All right, I'll show you. And now I'm off. Sit down, please. We need a lot more for the records. I don't, although I'd better check. GPs, physios and neurosurgeons reports. Of course, but experience tells us there are a number of tame GPs and consultants who are only too anxious to write anything that will get awkward patients off their hands. What the hell's that for? My article. It'll be appearing in the Daily National in a few days after we've asked your department to comment. Are you telling us you're not a bona fide claimant? I'm telling you, I'm not AFW. I'm a busy journalist. And all this is a sham? Yes, uh, and no. That is my name, but most of the answers are ones given by my brother-in-law, who submitted them with very similar legitimate medical reports and was rejected. So basically, this is attempted benefit fraud. See you in court. Was this charade really necessary? Yes, if it helps to expose the relish with which the likes of you operate a hostile and inhumane system. We are doing our job protecting the system against scroungers. People must appreciate that there is no magic money tree. As my article will illustrate, you don't think of yourselves as dealing with people, with vulnerable claimants. You're not concerned with the torments so many of them are subjected to. This agency's only interest is in meeting quotas and massaging statistics, later to be presented to the public by your paymasters with political, self-serving double talk. Mr Hardy, your attempt at fraud will only prove our point. Your article, and others like it, don't really help your cause. Really? Well, the government is already investing in automated systems to do all this more cheaply and efficiently. With artificial intelligence, there will be no need for any human interactions with claimants. So you lot will be out on your ear. Nonsense. I believe there will always be a need for talking, and there will always be thousands who will demand it. Possibly. But after this article goes to press, they certainly won't be talking to you. Good day. So, where does all that leave us? Right now? Ready for the next claimant. But I think that sooner than we anticipated, we might surely be classified as AFW. AFW.
AFW by Jim O'Connor starred Melanie Short as Miss Weston, Alison Griffin as Miss Smith, and Joe Foster as Mr. Hardy. The title music is by Thomas J. Crawley. The audio engineer was Laurie Swan. The audio designers were Karen Ashton and James Connor. And it was directed by Russell Fleet. This was an original audio drama from the Questus Theatre.